of this playlist is to give you a good picture of some of the major first grade math topics from the first quarter. In this current video, I will examine standards from weeks one through three and suggest, suggest some strategies for instruction. The second video in this playlist will provide strategies for the remainder of first quarter. This is a snapshot of the standards from weeks one through three of school. During the first three weeks of school, there is a standard related to counting. We put this standard here, hoping that teachers will start to build counting into their daily routines. In order for students to master counting, counting on from a given number, and skip counting, they must have short, frequent practice across time. This can be done during morning meeting or calendar time. As students practice counting, be sure to give them access to a hundreds chart or number line as a visual support tool. Remember, this is when the standard is introduced, but students have the entire school year to master first grade standards. The majority of week one, weeks one through three focuses on problem solving using manipulatives and drawings and using counting to solve problems. This is mostly a review of kindergarten standards. In a moment, we will look at which parts are a review and which parts are new learning. The important thing to understand about this section of standards is that we must expose students to a variety of problem types and students must be able to solve a variety of problem types. Page 30 of your unit analysis, there is a diagram outlining these problem types. In weeks one through three, the unit analysis explains that at this time only certain problem types will be assessed. Some problems require an action and some problems have no action. The problems with the actions are easiest to solve. In these problems, you can see that students are either physically adding something or physically taking away something from a group. The reason these are easiest to solve is because students can feel that action of adding to or taking away from. In kindergarten, students were required to be proficient with action problems where the result was unknown. So for example, two bunnies are on the grass, three more hopped over to the grass, they physically moved onto the grass. How many bunnies are there now? In other words, what is the result? If we were subtracting, the problem might look like five apples were on the table, I ate two apples, how many apples are on the table now? We are physically taking away, removing some apples, and in other words, what is the result? What happened now? During the first three weeks of school, these are the only types of action problems that we need to solve, those problems with the result unknown. The other category of problems is that of no action. Here. Students can't physically see things being moved to a set or taken away from a set. Instead, everything is there right in front of the students from the start, for example, on the table. The students are just trying to determine the total or one of the parts. So for example, three red apples and two green apples are on the table. There's no action, everything is there. The question would be, how many apples are on the table? Because the total is unknown in this problem, this is called a total unknown problem. And this is a review from kindergarten. So let me just reiterate, the learning that we've already done from kindergarten that we will continue in the first quarter are the action problems where the result is unknown, the no action problems where the total is unknown, and then the new learning for first quarter um, during weeks one through three, we'll look at unknown add-in problems. Kindergarten does teach unknown atom problems towards the end of the school year, but mastery of this standard or mastery of unknown atom problems really won't occur until first grade. An example of an unknown atom problem is five apples are on the table, three are red, the rest are green. How many are green? So we're looking at not knowing one of the parts and having to find a strategy to figure out what is that missing part. We will look at strategies for solving unknown atom problems a little bit later. The last problem type that students will see in first quarter, now this will be late in first quarter at the end of first quarter, focuses on making comparisons. 
This problem type will occur in weeks 8 through 9 and is paired with the first grade's interpreting data standards so that students can answer questions about how many more and how many less using data. Please remember that these problem types are introduced at the beginning of first grade in order to allow ample practice across the school year. However, students have all school year to master first grade standards. For example, as you enter weeks four through seven of first of quarter, which focus on using a variety of strategies to solve problems, you will still want to continue exposing students to the three problem types we talked about. In order to help you think about the different problem types, let's take a look at some example problems. Here's our first problem. Two cats are in the park. Two more cats go to the park. How many cats are in the park now? So first of all, is there an action or is there no action? Yes, with this one there definitely is an action. More cats are physically being moved to the park. And then we want to think, what is our problem time? Well, because we want to know how many cats are in the park now, the result is unknown. Let's try another one. Six dogs play in the park. Two dogs go home. How many dogs are still playing in the park? Now, action or no action. Again, in this problem, there is an action of the dogs physically going away. So we know it's an action problem. And then we also know how many dogs are left in the park now. That is our unknown. So again, our result is unknown. Here's another one. There are three ducks, three yellow ducks, and one white duck in the pond. How many ducks are in the pond? Now, although these ducks are swimming, there's really no action of physically adding ducks to the set or taking ducks away. Your whole set is there. So there's no action in this problem, and we are trying to figure out the total, so the total is unknown. Here's another one. Four ducks swim in the pond. One is white, and the rest are yellow. How many ducks are yellow? Again, the entire set is there. There's no action of adding to or taking away from, so this is not an action problem. We know that one of the ducks is white, so we know part. We don't know the other part. We don't know the part that is yellow, so one of the add-ins is unknown. A great way for helping students solve problems with missing add-ins is to use break-apart sticks with concrete manipulatives. In this problem, it says four ducks swim in the pond, one duck is white and the rest are yellow. How many ducks are yellow? So we know the total is four. We also know one part, which is one white duck. So here we will use our break apart stick to show the one white duck. Now it's easy to see the other part has three yellow ducks. Whenever we represent problems with manipulatives, we also want to start make to make connections between other representations as well. So here, let's write an equation. I'm going to write four is equal, that's my total amount, my whole. On the other side of the equation, I will show my parts. The first part that I know is one. Now, if I didn't know the second part, I would just write plus something, plus question mark. However, since I figured out that the second part is three, I can now put one plus three. So four is the same amount as one plus three, or four is equal to one plus three. Another great tool for solving missing add-in problems is the math mountain. Here, the whole amount goes in the top circle, and then as the whole is broken into parts, they are placed in the bottom circles. If we know one part, we would move the one part that we know down, and then it's easy to find the missing part. As we model using break apart sticks and math mountains, be sure to use the language of part, part, whole. This helps students when generating equations so that they know the whole amount is on one side of the equal sign, while the parts are on the other side. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. For more information about first quarter standards, including strategies for instruction, preview the second video in this playlist from Engage New York. The following chart outlines where in the video from Engage New York each standard is discussed.